let's talk about events. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we're back on the one. This tutorial we're going to be talking about events and just basically looking a little bit closer to what the frick events are and hopefully you're going to end this tutorial by well understanding you know the different types of events that there are and then also hopefully you'll be able to implement an event yourself now obviously not a custom event that's a completely different topic but rather an event that already exists and you're going to be able to use that so the first thing and that we've seen actually last time for the bow is that we've had to add the compute fov modifier event now if i were to go into this particular class you can see that it extends from the event class and if i control h on this you can actually see all of the different events that exist in forge and there are a Great. Like, I mean, look at how many different events there are. There are so freaking many. It is crazy. Now, what we want here is actually we want to make sure that we have the source code not compiled, but with the proper sources. Uh, I do not have those yet. So I actually just click download sources and it's going to, it should in theory download all of this automatically. And then it's going to get me the correct class. So if you have this, you can simply click download sources. It's going to take a moment and then hopefully it's going to reload the class and then we should actually get something very interesting and that is there you go and the interesting thing is of course the comments right here that is quite important that we have these comments because now all of a sudden you know even though we can look at this like giant list over here we can see that the compute fov modifiers event and usually most events if i were to just jump into a random one you should be able to most of the time see whether or not there are client events and whether or not they are mod or Forge events, right? So you have Forge events over here, and alternatively, uh, you down here, you also have a mod events, right? So those are the two different things, but I'll explain in a second. So let's uh, go back to the do this one right here. You can see compute FOV modifiers event only on the logical client means that this is a client event. That is why we have the line disk value disk client right here. That is why that is the case. Now, why is it a Forge event? Well, you can actually find out whether or not something is a Forge or a mod event by going, let's say, into the FML client setup event here. And if we go continue to go down until we hit the event right here, we can actually see that one of those implements the iModbus event. And if it implements this interface, that means that it is a ModBus event. That's literally all that there is to it. So there are four different types of events, sort of grouped into two groups, right? There are client and server events, and that the and then there are mod and forge bus events. That's literally all that there is to it. And that is the way to basically very easily recognize which is which. Now, when it comes to events, like I said, you can do so many different things. It is actually crazy. Usually forge events are events that happen sort of in the game, right? So we can see when a, a chunk is loaded or saved, when a, uh, I don't even know, when something chats in the server, when you break a block, things like that. Versus Modbus events, right? Those are usually, if we were to go back down to this one right here, the iMod event bus over here, you can see these are usually like registration events. Hey, what do you need to do in for your configs, right? Register item decoration. So you can see that these usually are events that you that are sort of called before everything happens. And then forge events are events that actually happen while the game is going, right? Like tilling the ground or something like that. And what we're going to do just for the sake of argument is we will actually add another event over here, or rather we're going to implement an event and it's going to be the on living damage over here. And this is going to take the living damage event over here. I'm going to call this event. And very importantly, of course, add the add subscribe event annotation right here. And then we can actually do a couple of things. So we can say if event dot get entity. So this would be the entity that was hit, right? We have to think about it in the following way. Whenever we define a method with an event as its parameter, this event, when that gets called, so to speak, then our method gets called, right? So if we were to go into our event over here, you can see that the living damage event is fired just before damage is applied to an entity. So now we know when this is fired. So now we actually know when this method is being called. And that is the whole idea, right? So that is the why events are so versatile and so cool, because every time a living entity is damaged, this method gets caught. Now, of course, we need to restrict it a little bit and we can say, okay, if the event that was damaged or if, if the entity that was damaged rather is an instance of a sheep, let's say, right? I'm going to cast it to a sheep. And we can even say if the source and the direct entity of the source is an instance of a player, right? If that is the case, we can also pass ask, we can also cast this to a player 
then we actually can do some interesting things. Because if we now have access to the player, we can ask all sorts of interesting questions in coding over here. We can, for example, say player dot get main hand item and then get item. And if that item is, for example, and I'm going to use this example again because I like it, is if, if this is an end rod, then and we hit a shape with an end rod, then something is going to happen. Now, this is exactly the w way I'm going. And we can then, so for example, say player dot send system message and we can do a literal component here in this case and we can say player dot get name dot get string just hit a sheep with with a with an end rod you frick you sick frick there you go right so we could do something like this and then we can even do crazier things we can say well the sheep actually is going to get a poison effect added to it because why not right there's a new mob effect instance of mob effects and there's going to be poison over here for, I don't even know, let's just do 600 ticks and maybe an amplifier of five. So got something crazy over here. And then we can even say player dot get main item and I'm going to shrink this by one. So we're going to basically take one of the end rods away. I don't know where it went, but that is up to your imagination. But the idea is that this is so cool because now we've actually added some functionality to the end rod itself, even though that is a vanilla item. Same thing with the shape, right? And of course, there are different events that you can use for these things. So for example, I believe in the entity events, you, for example, also have the, let's, it might be in the living event even, or let's just go to the event and let's just search. So we have right-clicking events, uh, maybe a click, maybe click is a better one. So we have a right-clicking of a block. There it is. So we have an entity interact event, right? And you can see this event is fired on both sides, meaning both server and client, when the uh, player right-clicks an entity. All of a sudden, with the entity interact event over here, we could, in theory, add right-clicking functionality to entities that we don't even, like, own, let's say, right? So, like, to vanilla entities. And that is why events are so freaking cool and powerful. But with this done, let's just, for the sake of argument, jump into the game and see this as an example, hopefully being able to present to you this example, and then you can transfer the knowledge gained from this tutorial to your own implementation of events, which would be really freaking cool. So let's take a look. All right, I found this back in Minecraft. And as you can see, there are a couple of sheep right here. And if I hit it normally, nothing happens. However, if I have an end rod in my hand, you can see that I just hit a sheep with an end rod, you sick frick. And I can basically well, continue to do this. And there we freaking go. And it always subtracts an end rod from me because, well, of course, that is how we define this. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And that is a, an example of a custom event added to our Minecraft mod. Awesome. I basically cannot tell you enough how important it is to just test stuff out with these events. It is so freaking cool. They're super versatile. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about sounds and block sounds. Hope to hear you there. So, yeah.